What's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? <clears throat> you guys know what it is. This is Kevin from the Cold Progression Podcast. Oh, I'm getting some weird text. Brought to you by My Song Day Rock 2000 to today with another fantastic interview with a great band out of Eastern Pennsylvania. But before we jump in here, let me go through my shameless plugs because if I had advertising, that's where I put it. But right now, it's just, again, just like I've been saying in the last couple podcasts, the advertising that request that we're getting right now is just not really working out for us because they want us to do some weird stuff that just doesn't flow with what we're trying to do. So please follow my song of the day, Rock 2000 on places like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, where you'll get the 30 second song of the day feature. That's how you can grow your music knowledge every single day. Fall in love with new bands, get to know new bands, fall in love with bands you used to love, and just grow the community in general. Also, anytime like a podcast, YouTube video gets released, you'll find out there. On Instagram, we also have our Tuesday night IGTV videos, which is like a Tuesday night behind the scenes thing where you get to know what we're doing here behind the scenes. And also our Wednesday live streams every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Central. We do roast battles of our friends here. That's all there. It's always fun. We did dark jokes one week. It was just a blast. So please join us there. Please also subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can find the Core Progression Podcast. But every single Wednesday, we have other videos such as our album reviews, which we're going to be doing more of in the future because we have a lot coming out in September and October. We will also do our Kevin Figures Out videos, which is me figuring out a band if I like them or not that I'm not really well versed in. I've done The Who. I've done throw our uh, Thousand Songs. Thousand Below? Yeah, Thousand Below. Baby Metal, Dance Gavin Dance, and Poppy. I know I've got Flesh God Apocalypse coming up. Um, I don't remember who else I have coming up to that, but I'm looking forward to that as well. We also have our special ones. Where we're talking about emerging bands in the scene, and then also our yearly ones. So you're going to want to get in on that. Subscribe. And for the Core Progression Podcast, the podcast where we are bringing all the emerging bands in the scene to you to really get in the know now so you can bring to your friends that you knew them before they got you know big. You can find us here on YouTube where you can watch the interviews or you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Google cool Play. Links in the description below. But now let's get to the show. So when we did the when I did the Another Day Dawns podcast, this uh, band reached out to me on Twitter or not on Twitter on the YouTube video and commented, "Hey, can you check out our stuff?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Why not? So I checked out their stuff. I'm like, holy shit. Their Time to Panic album, which came out on February 21st, 2020. I'm like, this is good stuff. I really like it. So let's see if we can get them on the podcast. And we did. And here it is. So from Eastern Pennsylvania, please welcome the Hard Rockers from the band Crooked Ways. Are you guys ready? Because this one is a fun one. We deep dive into their music. We talk about some fun stories. It's all good. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression podcast. One of these guys reached out to us on, I believe, if I'm correct, it was one of the YouTube videos of the podcast and send the comment, hey, you know, can you check out stuff? I'm like, yeah, just send it to the Instagram page. We'll see what we got. And about a week later, here we are. So please look at the Core Progression podcast, the guys from the band Crooked Ways. So guys... Welcome to Core Progression Podcast. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thanks for having us. That was me who slid in your DMs, so thank you for obliging. <laughs> well, like you said in the comments, and then I allowed you to slide in the DMs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it right, Nick. <laughs> it, was, it was consensual. Yeah, it was totally consensual. I, w- I was very happy for that slid in DM. It was like sliding the third, and it was whoo, safe. <laughs> Always. That's how we roll in Crooked Blaze. That's how you roll. All right. Yeah, I love it. So we're going to start this out with some introductions so everyone knows who you are. So I'm going to do this the same way I've been doing it for the past couple. Please tell me what your – I'm going to do this like school style. Like tell me what your name is. Tell me what you do in the band. And one fun fact about yourself. But usually the fun fact about yourself, I want to see here like the wackiest thing you can think of. Because I've heard people give me their Tinder bios. I've heard someone tell me if they were the biggest YouTube sensation in Sweden before PewDiePie, which is actually true. And I've heard some other crazy stuff like, mm. well, uh, wearing a dress to an award show because the guy thought it was funny. So I've heard it all. I've heard a lot of it. And I want to see if you guys can top it. So let's start with Nick. Nick, take it away. All right, uh, I'm Nick. I play guitar in Crooked Ways, and uh, I think one lesser known fact about myself is that I have an Instagram, well, not Instagram, sorry, uh, Twitter semi-famous cat that has about 10,000 followers. <laughs> you started a Twitter profile for your cat? What, what's, uh, how, uh, how'd that, how'd it get semi-famous is the real question. Uh, not, not me. My wife did. And I don't know, man, like people just love cats. People love cute cats and people just started retweeting stuff. And th- now we have, uh, 
we have some of the the cast members from Mrs. Doubtfire that follow it and send my wife recipes, <laughs> and it's it's really blown up. There, it's yeah, it, it's very odd how it happened. I can't take any credit for it because it was all my wife, but. Yeah, the, I, th- I think that's pretty interesting. The thing that it's astonished also- me is the is, is the cast members of Mrs. Doubtfire sending your wife <laughs> recipes. That- <laughs> yeah, she's, she's she sends my wife like cookie recipes. He's a uh, he's a uh, Chewy for anyone who knows what that is, like the the pet uh, supplies company. He's a sponsored influencer for Chewy. So, <laughs> god damn, already now when, when it comes to interesting facts, that is definitely one of those interesting facts. I absolutely love it. But for myself, I gotta tell you, I'm more of a dog person. I had a beagle when I was a kid, and see, but I do agree when you're talking about like the whole entire thing with pets, especially online. I mean, take a look at Twitter. Like, there's the We Rate Dogs Twitter account, which just blew up, and then um. I like I pet a dog today. Like there's some like a, there's like some like 13 year old kid. Every time he pets a dog, he takes a picture of it and just puts it out on Twitter. And people are like, "Oh my god, Doge!" Yeah. No, it, it's like they've never seen him before. Right? I know. I'm, it's, it's hilarious though. Oh, it definitely. Is. I'm a dog person too. For some reason, we just ended up with cats. But semi famous lo- love them all. Yeah, yeah. Special cat. Also, so, cat. also, a cat bringing some of that money. Hell yeah. <laughs> that, that chewy money. <laughs> Free shit. Uh, am I going next? Yeah, you're yeah. up next, Zach. Uh, hey, I'm Zach from Crooked Ways. I sing in the band. And I, interesting fact, I don't know if this is super interesting, but you made a baseball reference earlier, so I figured I'd go off of that. Is that uh, I'm a huge Yankees fan. I don't know if that is good or bad. <laughs> it depends who you're talking to. Uh, yeah, it depends yeah, I don't who you're know who talking, we're talking to. to here, but I know Nick is too. But um, yeah, I uh, <laughs> living and dying every day with that. So I'll say this: Well, I mean, I'm from Milwaukee, so you pretty much know where my allegiances lie. Oh, however, yeah. however yeah. the one hat that I love to wear that doesn't involve the Milwaukee Brewers is the one I have on right now, mostly because it's got that like it's a Florida Marlins one, but it's the retro Florida Marlins oh, logo. Yeah, <laughs> and I I still think it's like the like like one of the most cool logos I've ever seen. Yeah, in my I like that life. So logo like, a lot. I didn't like it when they moved to the new one, so I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah like any, like, any retro logo of a team that isn't named that anymore is like free game, you know. Like it doesn't matter if you're a fan or not, you can wear it because it's retro. It doesn't exist anymore. So, yeah, and that's how I like with the Brewers when they went back to the ball and glove logo look. Mm-hmm. But this yep. year, it's just like yeah. thank God because there's so many people. Because anytime you walk around, everyone's got that hat on. No one's got like no one had like the regular M. Everyone had the ball yeah. and glove logo. I love the Brewers logo. I think it's awesome, and they've got a good team. So. Um, this year, not doing so hot, though. But then again, it's such a messed up, fucked up year. Who who the hell yep. knows what's yeah, going on? Yeah. Yel- Yelich was going to pick it up, too. So he, He's starting to pick it up now. I've been yep. saying that, well, especially with with now them playing with Braun's contract being as big as it is coming off the books at the end of the year. They're basically like they were setting themselves up this year to kind of just re-sign Yelich, get going. And then all of a sudden, once 2021 hit, they were going to just go forward and go for it. Like they were setting themselves up for another run at it that year. So I'm like, OK, I can get behind that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. But but enough enough with baseball because this ain't a baseball podcast. I, <laughs> had to bring it up though. <laughs> had to bring it up though. Alrighty, we're gonna go to Patrick. So you are up. All right. My name is Patrick. I play bass in Crooked Ways. And I guess an interesting fact about myself is I've been to 45 of the 50 states. Um, my family used to travel a lot when I was younger. So the five states I have left are Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, uh, Hawaii. And I'm forgetting one, Alabama. So those are the five I have left. All righty, because I, I was gonna about to ask, like, which states haven't you been to? The only one of, of that that I've been to was Alabama, because I had to drive through Alabama during a um, 24-hour run from Minneapolis to Panama City Beach, Florida. Okay. And oh god, we got shot at in Alabama. <laughs> Not fun. Not fun. <laughs> I'm gonna speak for uh, our our boy Steve too, our drummer who couldn't be here. I'm gonna say his interesting fact: he's a diehard Devils fan, and he bleeds New Jersey all over the place. He should be my brother yeah. then. Him and him and my brother would definitely get along with that. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, and his uh his drum kit was Flyers colors, and I was like, hey, is that intentional <laughs> or what? Like I'm loving it. But then he painted it. A different color. He's like, fuck you, Pat. It's not Flyers colors anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. And you got the Flyers switching on right now, Pat? Yeah. 
Games, feel, games aren't it, bad there, so. No, but, oh, yeah, because they're the, number, they're the number one seed. How's the game going right now? Because I don't have it on. Because if I did, I'd have to turn around like and look at the TV over here, but I oh, don't yeah. really want to do that all the time. <laughs> Nothing super interesting yet. So, you know, seeing – it's just good to have – you know, very interesting to have playoff hockey in August, especially with the Flyers being the, uh, the number one seed, you know, so – We'll see how it's, it goes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> playoff hockey is like the is, when it comes to like sports, when it comes to uh, like the playoff series and it comes to just like the yeah, basically the playoff series. Hmm. When it comes to professionals, when you look at football, baseball, basketball, hockey, when it comes to playoff hockey, it just everything just gets amped up every step of the way. When it comes to basketball, it's the same thing. Football, you know, same thing, but it's only one game. But it gets amped up. But with hockey, it's just like the speed gets even faster. The hits get even harder. It just. It's just there's just a level of energy that's unmatched as you go from round to round. Well, it's so crazy too because um, one of the games yesterday, I think it was the uh, or a couple of days ago, the Blue Jackets and the Lightning had uh, yeah, five, five overtimes, which is insanity. <laughs> like, yeah, you almost played three games in one day, <laughs> right? And the other team is like, all right, because their game is postponed until they're done, so they're like, all right, like you guys almost done, like we're we're waiting to go. <laughs> Yeah, it got postponed until the next day because it was way too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I found that to be absolutely hilarious. But I know right. with Steve, I hope everything with that he's got to deal with today goes okay. Don't know what it is, but don't really need to know. I'm not, We're not on the need-to-know basis here in the podcast. Just <laughs> nah, give, him a, good. give him the well wishes. So let's get started actually on the music because that is what is important here. And I'm going to stress the importance of it by saying it twice for emphasis like Josh Nichols from Jake emphasis. and Josh. Emphasis. <laughs> Here, you got to give it the emphasis. <laughs> exactly. So let's start out with this. How did you guys all come together to form this band? Because it seems like, if, I mean, especially with different sports fandoms, I know that can always be kind of like a weird thing, but different <laughs> fans coming together. It happens. I just had to kind of come up with that. But how did you guys all start music and how did you guys come together to form Crooked Ways? Yeah, um, I'll start it quick, but I know Nick can go a little bit more in depth after me. Um, it, it's all all kind of about, I'm sure, like a lot of bands just being in the right place at the right time. Um, Nick and I uh, grew up uh, going to the same high school, and we started uh, playing stuff very early on, just the two of us. Then and through college, we went to the same college as well. So we just kind of kept doing acoustic stuff, the two of us. Until we uh, ran into some other people, Nick can talk about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. In in college, we were in uh, the radio station, so Zach and I each had our own radio shows, and that's where we met Pat. And we had just kind of kept in touch over the years. We added him. We went through a shit ton of drummers before we found the right one last year, which is Steve, uh, who couldn't be here, but uh, we ended up just finding him through uh, the studio that we recorded at, just throwing out some posts on Facebook and. That's pretty much how it all came together. It was, it's me, Zach, and Pat basically have known each other for five plus years. And then Steve has been the newest addition. But we were super happy to find him because when we were looking for a new drummer after a tumultuous past with drummers, <laughs> we had uh, we had really just been looking for somebody who was a bro, you know, like a friend. Like we almost didn't care what he played like or how he played. We just wanted uh, we just wanted somebody who fit in with us and he exactly fit that bill. So it, it he, just worked like, perfectly. Yeah. He's even more than that. He's amazing. He's an amazing drummer, like on top of being just like awesome person. So we, we love Steve. We love having him being a part of this whole thing now. And just want to give credit to our friend Tucker who drummed on the album and really did us a solid by filling in while we were looking for someone more permanent, but he killed it on the album. So yeah. Also somebody that we knew from college. So we all met through school. Yeah. Long story short. <laughs> Um, how, what, how'd you guys get started? Like with this radio station thing though? Cause I had a buddy in college that was doing that. And I thought about potentially jumping in on that cause he had his own radio show and listening to the, what like basically what they were playing on that radio station. Uh, if I would have joined in and had my own show, it definitely would have been something completely <laughs> different because everything was all like either was either like pop or very alternative, very independent. All of a sudden you'd have gotten me on there and it'd been like, alrighty guys, you know me, I'm just gonna start playing some rise against for you motherfuckers. Here we go. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what it was. It was a it was a very diverse radio station. Every hour, every other hour had completely different shows. Zach and I kind of had hard rock, punk rock, uh, and then somebody else would come after us, and it could be like a smooth jazz show. And we got into it just because we were in a, a related major, electronic media major, and it was just something that was promoted throughout the college. But we loved it. It was one. Of, it was one of the best decisions I made was joining that. 
that radio station. Yeah. I learned uh, not only a lot about like doing radio stuff, but also a lot about music because uh, people would share so much music with me. All the people that I've uh, met doing that. And yep. Pat can talk about it too. Cause he was there oh, longer yeah, than did. us. Yeah. Well, I was probably one of the only, one of the only non electronic media majors in radio. I was actually a sociology major. So I, like all these people kind of knew each other and had clicks from that. And then I was kind of coming in, um, but yeah, it's, it's weird thinking back how many, oh, uh, Kutztown University Radio, shout out to Kutztown, um, that's the radio station we were on, and it's crazy how much of our life is kind of like intertwined within the radio station, like, for instance, um, Nick actually met his wife at my last radio show, um, sure. so yeah. that, that's how they met, and now it's Whoa. like, because of that show, it's like, here's Nick's life, you know, it changed the, <laughs> the, 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 the life. So- the radio station birthed my wife. Yeah, and now you have a really famous cat. <laughs> right? <laughs> All goes back to radio, I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> All goes back to that. I mean, it's like you made a movie about it. Like, there'd be like, it'd be like the time, it'd be like a going back in time. All of a sudden, you'd be pads like, okay, I got to make sure I get Nick to this show. It's like, all of a sudden, Nick, why are you inviting me here? Tonight's the first night of the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A whole back to the future moment where you got to make it line up. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, though, for, for, it's funny you say that the, the first night of the rest of your life. I don't remember going to Pat's show because it was the last night of the semester and me and my buddy got so drunk that I don't remember walking to the radio station or talking to my wife for the first time at that show. I guess it's technically the first picture of you two in the same photo together. <laughs> <That's Yep. laughs> the first photo of you two together is just you like Here's blasted out of your mind. <laughs> I'm glasses on just like... <laughs> There's photographic proof, but I do not remember it. And that photograph is the only only way I can confirm that it actually happened. <laughs> it actually happened in, in the photograph. It probably looks like you're in like the weekend at Bernie's stage. You're just like... Something <laughs> <laughs> dude. Like, <laughs> well, I, like, I like Pat, were you like holding him up and like Zachary like moving well, his I'll lips around to try and make it? With my co host, because for my last semester, actually, like one of our good friends was our, my co host. Um, and it's like we're sitting down, and Nick's wife was actually at the time like she was training to be on the radio, so she was like shadowing our show, so that's why she was there. And we just had a bunch of our friends come for my last show because I was in the radio for two and a half years or so, and it was kind of like a get together. So that's how the paths uh, kind of cross. So he, he's standing up, I think, leaning up against the doorway, though. So I'm, a, I'm supporting him. <laughs> yeah, I needed support. I was going to fall over. <laughs> <laughs> and she loved you from that day on. <laughs> yeah. hey, she Just said good I was memories. Cute. She yeah. said I was cute. Miller, <laughs> Mil, I think it was a Bud Light Platinum is the uh, the beverage of love at Kutztown University <laughs> Radio. First drink at your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> God, that'd be like perfect advertising, you guys. Bud Light Platinum. Sponsor our next album. Crooked <laughs> <laughs> Ways, Platinum by Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> and also in the music videos, it's just like you have the Bud Light Platinum, and every single time it's every time you saw every time like you put a beer down, you just put it down, and then you twist it so the label shows out. So, oh yeah, really good to the shot of the Bud Light. Like all the bands that are sponsored by Monsters have like the monster wristbands and everything. We'll have like Bud Light headbands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy thing is like you're bringing up Bud Light, you're talking to a guy from Milwaukee who had an internship with Miller Coors and it's like as has ah. always and has family in the business. So it's like it, how he said like a very, very um less than pleasurable outlook when it comes to Budweiser and Bud Light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> No allegiances here, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say this though: usually when by, usually when I end up drinking Bud Light, it's usually green colored because they sponsor Bud Light. Always ends up sponsoring like the big, uh, like St. Patrick's Day bar crawl here. And yeah. the last couple of years, we've the last couple of years I've done it. In the last two has just been me and my best friend. Last year was absolutely hilarious because we rode there from where we were living at the time to this place about three four, about four miles maybe we had to ride but we had to ride through a couple other places that were having it and we rode on a tandem bike so <laughs> imagine seeing two guys with me with two speakers in my backpack blasting irish music like gaelic storm flogging molly dropkick murphy's as we're barreling down the street on a tandem bike you think people would just be like holy shit this is hilarious <laughs> we, we, went, we, went, we went through two streets and it's just like full of a bunch of like college kids and kids like in their early 20s like oh my god they just want to go out and drink and party and listen to like I don't know what, what the kids listen to these days is Fetty Wap still a thing I don't fucking know anymore <laughs> <laughs> is a thing now 
but not that either. Uh, <laughs> well, so like we were riding through it, all of a sudden people were looking at us like, who the fuck are these guys? The guys there at the fuck out. We were like, well, shit, you guys are dumb. We get to the street that we're supposed to be on, which is much more of like an artsy kind of area. Oh my God, people were loving it every step. Like we were riding down the street. It was like a freaking parade. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so that, was, no one was arrested. Um, me and my buddy were not arrested. My buddy did break his wrist later that night, though, because we were both drunk on the tank. We got back to our apartment. We were playing. I think it was Sellers of Catan with a couple of people. And then he was going to go out and do something with his friends. And I'm like, dude, I'm so tired. I, I was going to pass out. A half hour later, he comes. I've seen him in the house with his wrist like covered in frozen peas from the freezer. I'm like, dude, what did you do? I think I broke my wrist. Can you drive me to the hospital? I'm still drunk, dude. <laughs> So someone came and got him, and he actually did break his wrist. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so the lesson of that kid is, kids is, don't drink and drive. He didn't even, he wasn't even driving. He was biking, but that's, but don't drink and drive. Even if you like took a nap for a half hour, you're still yeah. drinking. Your friend asks you to drive to the hospital. Find a different mode of transportation for him. That still applies. Yeah, <laughs> it still applies. <laughs> Alrighty, so I kind of want to talk about a little bit more, well, definitely about your music as well. And one thing I want to talk about is the style that I especially heard on your first album. Because when I was listening to it, uh, this album is, again, called Time to Panic. The, the thing I recognized was it was hard rock, but I felt like there was a lot of like that 80s rock inspiration in there. So do you guys listen to a lot of that like 80s rock? And did you were you really inspired by it to put it into the songs on this album? I don't think it was intentionally meant to be 80s. I think, if anything, what we were kind of going for was running the gamut across a bunch of different genres. I mean, the specific 80s style you're talking about is something that uh, that is near and dear to my heart. But as far as some of the heavier stuff, like that was a lot of Pat's influence. Uh, there's some punk rock vibes in there, too. We all kind of have a bunch of musical influences and being our first album, we just didn't want to make something that was no offense to Green Day, but like a Green Day album where a lot of the songs are generally power chords and melody over it. And I think we wanted to try and do something different where every song was a little bit different. So I think the 80s influence is definitely in there, but it was just one part of the recipe for the entire album, if that makes sense. Yeah. A- and I mean, I can speak to just like having heard Nick play guitar for so long is that his that he listens to a lot of like 80s rock. And I mean, he listens to everything, but um, he it definitely comes through in his playing because, I mean, he's he knows how to play like a shit ton of like Van Halen and stuff like that. And so like when he's like making solos and riffs, you hear it definitely come through um, in just like that's what he's um really really good at creating but also putting his own style into it as well and i think we tried to show our influences but also like this is still ours as well understandable and definitely like when we dive even deeper into the album like i'm looking at my overall review on the album because i wrote like a whole like two paragraphs i'm like yeah i'm definitely gonna bring out some of this stuff in here as well because oh. i'm just taking a look at but like when i was talking about the 80s style just because like especially the guitar work when i listen to it like what like the reason why it stuck out so much to me is because i that stuff i would listen to when i was a kid with my dad because mm-hmm. he was like the he, like the guy i love van halen zz top rush uh, he his favorite band is electric light orchestra that though he like would never played around so was like i don't know why it makes no sense i'd love to hear mr blue sky <laughs> but of course like i was listening to, like eddie van halen play the guitar with like how crazy the sound is so that's why the reason I want to bring it up because like it made like listening to the album like especially when with that guitar bass like it made me feel like I was listening to like those old eighty like it made like they had the feeling of like listening to those tunes with my dad in in the basement I was like three four years old where he had this like old stereo with the tower speakers we crank it up full volume and I would like, we'd like air guitar for like eight or nine <laughs> songs and it was always like we'd always tell our mom that you know like it was so much fun playing loud music with dad and she's like you're gonna blow their ears Ears out, Randy. And well, so, l- let me ask you this: Do you know what song it was that gave you those '80s vibes the most? 
Um, I'm trying. Let me take a look. See, oh, we, we won't yeah. take we won't take any offense if you don't know the name of the title. But I I am curious because if you name the song, I can tell you exactly what the influence was for it. Alrighty, because I'm taking a look at the ones I dove deep into, and the one that I have like like especially from the in like this is how it saw, how it started was the one that gave me the '80s rock vibe, and I kind of like it because it's what I grew up on. The uh-huh. vibe was yeah. uh, another kind of sky. Yep, that's oh yeah, that's pretty much what I was thinking. That was 100 percent of Van Halen influence from a guitar perspective, at least. So yeah, you're you're I spot mean, on there. Yeah, when I, when I hear a solo like in that song that Nick does, I can I can hear the influence big time. But he, he like he kills it though. It, it's it's like one of my favorite solos uh, that he's put together. There's a new one he's uh, working on for like some unreleased stuff that is like my new favorite. But like for a while, that was like my favorite for a long time. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing about that song too is like there's some songs that I feel like artists just write they kind of like write themselves and I feel like that song kind of just like like that, the bass line I have in that song I think I wrote it when I ran through it with the guys for the first time and like very minimally changed it and it seemed like that song kind of just like fell in the place where some other times it feels like you're reworking and working a song for weeks or months or even years sometimes um, but I think that song kind of with the lyrics and the melodies came together super super quickly for us yeah that's a good call that's true too that was the first song that we wrote as a band Mm -hmm. really yeah Yeah. because that was when i was like i went deep into and then taking a look at um let me pull it up because taking a look at spotify right now i mean right now it's in your popular list it's ranked at number two but looking for overall plays it is definitely your number one with overall plays over twelve thousand right now yeah yeah made on a few playlists yeah, we got some love for that one, which was really cool. So, what playlist did you guys end up on with that one? I don't know. I'd have to jump into uh, into the Spotify metrics to take a look at, but you know, I don't know if you've ever thrown music up onto Spotify, but you just do that little like pitch it to to playlists, and a lot of the listeners, I think, were coming from California. It seemed like a smaller California hub based playlist. Can give you the, the name off the bat. Yeah, was, I mean, it, yeah, it, it was something. It was something. Yeah, someone liked <laughs> it, put it on their playlist, and it gave us some some exposure. Yeah, it was no Spotify <laughs> official like hard rock. Like we weren't up there ranking right behind uh, the newest Weezer release or anything like that or, or Slipknot, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, yeah un- understandable because I've I I do know a couple bands that did get on some of those podcasts, but like what they did for that was was they just basically pushed as hard as possible to get as many plays they could get on Sirius XM Octane, mm-hmm. and then because so many people were because they they, they were, at this one band was called Kingdom Collapse, their song Uprise was the number one song on Octane for two straight weeks in the middle of July, and it's like you after, after the playlist uh, and the makers of Spotify like they couldn't ignore it because if people are constantly requesting and listening to it, it's like okay you know you got to put on some playlists but it was a lot of the fans that were just like requesting it hard on twitter and on instagram like they're just tagging everybody like hey we want this song we want this song and it worked out tremendously for them i'm not gonna lie because they went from like i think it was when i started to really get they started with that song i think they're at like i think it was like thirty thousand monthly mm-hmm. listeners on spotify and now i believe i know they're over a hundred thousand for sure i don't know where they are exactly i'm gonna pull it up right now uh 121 Ooh, nice. Would you say they were again? Band, band is called Kingdom Collapse. Kingdom Collapse. Okay, go check them out. Another local band. They're out of San Antonio. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them. I've seen them once. It was it was the last show before everything got shut down. Oh man, I have to check them out. Love love finding new bands. Yeah, uh, bands. our last show before things got shut down. A lot a lot of people who came to it have like told us like just recently like you know that was the last thing I did before I was inside <laughs> yeah. for like three months. <laughs> <laughs> our last show was yeah. with um, Another Day Dawns on, I think it was like March 14th. Mm-hmm. So it was like right before, I think like literally the next week, it was like I, one of my jobs, I work at a record store. And I think like that that day was the last day we were open before <laughs> the governor shut everything down. So it was like super close to the cutoff. Yes. Yeah. I'll say that no wonder why you guys counting me because I think it was on the podcast I did with Another Day Dawns a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. That's how we found it. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of those guys. I'm always uh, checking out what they're doing. And I listened to part of the podcast and I was like, wow, this seems fun. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe Kevin would want to interview us too. So, yeah, and, and then for everyone else that's listening out there that has been, it's like, Hey, you know, does he actually listen to like, you know, the, like see the request, see like this, you know, the YouTube comments. Yeah. I see it all. I get it all. I try and respond to it as much as I can because 
I don't have anyone else doing this but me. Like, everything you see, it's all for me. <laughs> yes, I do lose a lot of sleep, but you know what? It's worth it! <laughs> You're doing an awesome job. Oh, yeah. Keep it up, kids. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Taking that one to heart. All right, so, like, um, let's dive deeper into the music. Because I, I really like the sound on this album, so I want to dive deep into a couple of songs to really get the take on it. We kind of talk about another kind of sky, but I want to go a little bit deeper into it because, like, I kind of, I get where the 80s influence come in, but when I was listening to it, like, it started out with that rough, distorted guitar sound. It had a good, fast pace overall. Like I said, like, kind of reminded me of that 80s rock. But then as we jump into the first verse, it was like a mixture of something that had more like a pop punk sound to it from like the 2000s mixed with that 80s rock sound. Because mm-hmm. then when I listened, it was like the guitar stayed heavy with that 80s sound, but the drumming matched with a lot of like that medium paced pop punk tempo. And I really did like it because it brought the influences in with like mixing with a more modern twist. And just the way that you guys match the pacing from those influences really worked well on this song. So I do have to applaud you for the songwriting on this one very much. Thank so. you. Well, thank you. That was yeah. the first one you said, right? Sensation X, probably. No, no, no. no this is, I'm still another, another kind of guy. Oh, uh, another yeah. kind of guy. Okay, I got you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And so, I th- yeah. I was gonna say, like, when Patrick was talking about like how he built the baseline for, it, and then you really kind of like just let the song develop over time, and just kind of you didn't try and force anything, kind of like just let it flow when it came to the style and writing it. Yeah, that's always what I love to hear because then you're just kind of like letting it go, you're just letting it happen, and then you create something phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because those yeah. guys already had like the foundation of the song kind of built, and I was like, all right, like, these are like the like, I went over for my first practice with them and kind of showed me the songs, and then um, came back the next week and just ran it through, and that was like the baseline I wrote like while I heard it the first time. The baseline I'm still playing now is always kind of stayed put, you know. Yeah, uh, that's like I love Pat's baseline in that because like I had always heard it when we would like play it live together, but I like could really dial into it when we went in the studio and I could hear him like play it more pure, and mm-hmm. it was like it really um uh, comes out strong in the beginning and just flows like you said. Yeah. It it really does, and I think that's another main reason why this song kind of easily flows from section to section because when you take a look at the chorus of the song, it does a lot was like the verses did, but melodicizes the tempo just slightly more than what we would see. And what I like about this is because we're getting the matching styles that fit with the same tempo and they get the strong, nice touch of the song and they really bring in a diversity into the sound. And I love what you guys do with the pre-chorus because it preludes into it and it just creates this overall mix in the sound that really does work out incredibly well. Then I got to jump to Nick on this one because there was (laughs) a guitar solo. It sounded totally something out of the 80s because it had more like that Eddie Van Halen flow to it without Mm -hmm. the like the specific tune that he had from like the 80s so i was like it had the flow it had everything but it didn't have that exact same tune and it works incredibly well with the overall pacing to kind of use as a bridge to go from that second chorus into the third verse and i'm a big fan of how this was constructed because it was just perfectly done just to flow right into it and give up that energy give up that vibe without having that crazy distortion at the same time as well yeah thanks i appreciate it it's uh Writing solos is obviously, I mean, being a, a lead guitar player is something that I love, but I tend to get very meticulous about the the very specific techniques that I want to use on each song as I'm working on each song. Sometimes I will say, you know what, I don't want to sweep there because I'm doing that in another song and I want it to be diverse. But since this was the first song that we did, I just let it all flow naturally. So for this particular one, there wasn't a whole lot of thought behind it. It just kind of happened, like Pat said. And, and like I was saying earlier, when you just let things happen, you let the song dictate itself, that usually creates something incredible because you're not trying to force something in there. You're not trying to put something in there that might not make sense. There are times when that does work as a contrast, but for the most part, I mean, a lot of times when I think a song just kind of listens to what it's trying to build on and just takes different parts, it's like, okay, maybe... Like the guitar just needs to follow what the bass line is doing just to match it, maybe and do some, some different things as well just to kind of work with it. But you kind of let the bass line dictate that. And then when it comes to the vocals, you let whatever the instrumentation is we need. And then you kind of let the vocals dictate what the pacing needs to be, what mm-hmm. the certain pitch needs to be on them to really maximize everything in terms of not only the vocal power, but also the instrumentation that's behind it as well. So when you really do that, it really does stand out. And no wonder why this song is one of your most popular. Yeah, and I, I will say too, to the credit of all the other guys, there are some songs where I'll have a rough melody or 
Uh, somebody else will have an idea for a part, but this is something where we all kind of came to the table with our own parts. So I had guitar, obviously, but Zach was the main one who put all the the melodies together again, kind of at practice. And Pat was obviously all him on the bass. So like I said, sometimes there's some overlap, but this was just all of us come together, almost going home, doing our homework and bringing it to the table. And it just kind of happened. So yeah, and that was really cool. And like to touch on something you said earlier about kind of like the pop punk like influence kind of like on the vocals, like in the beginning too, is like, I think like you were saying, we all kind of put our influences into it. Like you can hear Nick in his guitar. And like, I think that's where mine came in with like that. Cause that's totally a lot of stuff that I listen to is like punk, pop punk. Um, but I'm, and like, I listen to a bunch of other genres of like hard rock or hardcore kind of stuff. But that one I was like, is like what I grew up on. And it's like really came through, I think in the melodies and it really all kind of blended together. Super nice. And something we're obviously really happy with. So. Yeah. And I think the biggest reason why it blended together is spent incredibly well with those influences. Again, it's just, you're able to match the pacing on both of those influences so that it just flowed together very well. Yep. Somebody write that down. Match the pacing for the next album. Let's, let's not forget that. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I, now again, I got. I know I got to go to Zach on this one because, especially being the vocalist, there was something here that really stuck out to me because just the tone of your vocals, especially with that like '80s rock inspired sound, especially from Nick's guitar, the style of vocals you had, I thought just fit phenomenally with it. Because when I was listening to it, I like he had like a slightly higher pitched tone that also reminded me a lot of like those like. 80s era guys that you will see from that that like era of music era of rock and i was thinking of guys like vince neal from motley crew i was thinking guys like brett michaels from poison and stephen piercy from rat so i was like just kind of using that sound where it's like you have a little bit that like that hard rock feel but like a little more of a higher tone to it as well i was like holy shit this really does fucking fit god damn and again it just matched up perfectly with the tempo and what really stood out again and it's just with you creating the melodies on this one and then also understanding how the different pitches in your voice can work in different sections of the song it really helps drive the energy throughout the whole entire song and it really creates this great feel to it that also works in contrast with the instrumentation at times, but also in comparison, like contrast to kind of bring them both out at the same time, but also in comparison to let each flow together. So it's, it was really cool how this is all put together. Thank you so much for saying that, first of all, <laughs> but like it really means a lot that uh, you appreciate all that because we definitely like, I mean, for me, like doing the vocals on that song, I really felt like I got to go especially nuts with it because like in the, later half of the song like basically like right before the solo um i get i hit some of the like highest notes that i hit on this album and i just like really was able to kind of like let my voice loose on it and i really appreciate like the guys like giving me instrumentation that allows me to do that in the first place but also that just allows me to be creative and it's just like super cool how i think the song kind of builds and builds um, and that just kind of happened naturally because, you know, a title like Another Kind of Sky kind of feel, and the song feels like it's going up and up, you know, just somehow just like worked. And uh, that's, I hear that a lot in Nick Solo too, how he uh, builds up and takes it higher and higher kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and when you're building that together, you're building it with kind of the same tune, the same feel as well. I mean, it's just going to end up be creating this entirely great thing where all of a sudden just everything's going to end up matching each other and also building on it. So it's just, okay, we're not going to like bring anything down with it. You're just going to keep building it up and up and up and up and up. So all of a sudden you mm. get through the song and it's just, the energy is still there every step of the way. So by the time the song is over, everyone's looking at you thinking like, give me more. <laughs> it keeps, keeps going up. All right. I need to pinch my balls to hit some of the notes that Zach can. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that might not be the best thing to try and do on stage. All of a sudden you're playing guitar. It's like, okay, how am I going to do this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try, try, tried it once, never again. Oh, dear God. <laughs> do, do I want to know the story behind that or no? 
Oh no, no, no! It's fine. <laughs> okay, to- to- next topic, please. Oh, totally, that's totally understandable. But just to conclude with another kind of sky, because I always end up like do like an overall kind of thing to really sum it up. So here's basically the short version for everyone who's listening. If ever you want that kind of summary kind of style, so. I wrote, overall, this song is built with 80s rock and pop punk in mind that really makes the song stand out as their top on Spotify. The instrumentation works out so well because the more pop punk drum line and a more 80s inspired guitar tone work in harmony due to how they work with an energetic pacing. Zach's vocals fit in perfectly with the guitar and his diversity and pitch helps amplify the energy of the song overall. Incredibly well done. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's kind, of, that's kind of the whole scope of that one. But should we jump into another song? Because... I think we should. What about, right. you, okay. All right. All right. How, how does Sensation X sound? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Alrighty. So let's start out with this one. What was the inspiration on this one? Okay, I want I want Nick to talk about it a lot because it's a it's very much a his kind of song. Um, but what's that? Oh, I was gonna say before Nick goes into that, it's funny because another kind of guy was probably the first song we wrote, like as a band and sensation X is probably one of the last ones we wrote like for the album. So it's kind of funny. We haven't <laughs> ran after each other. Sure. The first one. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sensation X came like a year and a half later almost, you know? So it's, it's, cool. it's a cool contrast that we have there. Yeah. I know when we were coming up for the concept for sensation X, like Nick, uh, was talking to me and he was like, you know, I just want one more kick ass song yeah, that's, that's <laughs> uh, on the album. That's and that's he like went like, he took it upon himself to write something that could like basically kick off the album and it did. And we ended up using that because it's got, it starts off like hard right away. And that's, so we use it for like our first song when we play live because we want to come out hard. Yeah. That's exactly what it is at too. There's another song on the album called slick fan ranker that we used to uh, open our live shows with. And I think it was a bigger show. I, I think it was a show we were opening for Saving Abel and Hinder. Uh, and after that show, I just thought that was awesome. That was so much fun. Everything went so well. But we don't have that one in-your-face kind of chuggy song that I think every band should have in their arsenal. So the song was purely to fulfill that purpose of just getting right out there in your face and kind of showcasing everything that we were about in one song I th- that is personally my favorite song on the album but i also think again from a personal standpoint that it it most represents our style um and and who we are and, and who we sounded like as a band so i wanted all of that to to be contained in this one and it, as far as the lyrical content goes sensation x it was more or less just about chasing that feeling that makes you feel good and i always felt like it was appropriate to have as a as an opening song because that's what we all feel when we're out on the stage you want whatever sensation x is however it can be described because i know walking out on a stage is something that's described in a bunch of different ways by musicians and ultimately that that's what i was what i was chasing there too and i beat around the bush a little bit with some of my lyrics so i i kind of apply it to to other uh places in life too but the live show and coming out swinging was really the purpose of that song. So that's ultimately where it came from. And I personally was, was pretty happy with it. <laughs> and it's funny too, because the one, the one thing that's almost like the complete opposite of another kind of sky in this way is the pre-chorus on this song took forever to get right. We kept messing around with that melody so much in the word. True. <laughs> yeah. It, we, we didn't get, I don't think we really got the pre-chorus figured out like vocally or like melodically. And so we were in the studio, like, all right, we have to record this now. Like I kind of like brainstorming it with the producer, like what can we really do? Because we felt like we were like pretty stumped on it. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the, the pre-chorus we have now is like, I'm super, super satisfied with it. Like, I really think that Zach channels his like inner Lane Staley on that chorus. And <laughs> I love it for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Nick and I went back and forth on that for a while. Like, um, cause we had the lyrics basically written, um, but we want, but it wasn't uh, flowing how we wanted to. And so eventually we just kind of came to, let's try this. And then I, you know, I was tweaking with it in the vocal booth and then we found something we really liked and brought it all together. Mm-hmm. Cause the rest of the song we loved, we just wanted to make it uh, flow uh, between the, two parts uh, as best as it could. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm very meticulous when it comes to that stuff too. I I'm very much a perfectionist when it comes to writing songs, and the way that I gauge if a part is right or not is if it gives me chills the first time I hear it. And once I get those chills, that's how when I feel like okay, this is like this is right. And I'm sure I get on the guy's nerves all the time too when I'm always like, well, maybe we try this, that, the other, but I can't, I can't help it. It's like uh, I'm like a drug addict. I'm always looking for that. Uh, for that uh those chills to to go down my spine to get that uh that perfect high from a part oh that's totally understandable too because even coming from like a fan's perspective when it comes to music it's there are certain songs where i still remember the first time i ever heard them and just like remembering how it felt because a couple i can use an example would be um the first time like i remember back in november when falling in reverse dropped popular monster i remember I mm-hmm. saw like a, I saw like a notification for Instagram. I'm like, okay, I'll watch the video. I'll listen to it. I was at work at the time, and I had my phone. I was just watching it, and all of a sudden, like by the time it was over, I dropped my phone. I just went like this. I'm like, did I just actually witness and listen to this? Like, is this actually a thing? <laughs> like, I was just shocked by it. And I picked up like again. I'm like, yep, this is actually it. And then like another, I'm trying to a couple other examples. Like, ah, uh, the band Polaris, their song "Above My Head." I was actually driving to a concert for Falling in Reverse, and I first heard that one, and I'm like. And it just shook me to the core because it was talking all about depression and like just the way everything sounded like they perfectly described something that I had gone through three years ago. So it just shook me. And then also I'll use Make Them Suffer's author song Erase Me right from the beginning. Like all of a sudden it just get this nice like melodic piano feel. So you're like, okay, I don't know what's going on here. All of a sudden you just hear this screaming or like Erase Me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what the? holy (laughs) shit (laughs) so it's like i totally understand where you're talking about like it's it's addictive to like try and make sure like you know when you're listening to song you're trying to create something it's like when you get those chills you're like okay i definitely have something that's working here this is definitely what i wanted to go for this is definitely be something that's creative and i love what you talked about nick where you're talking about you want to come out with something that uh, like something that you could come out to and just basically blow the roof off the place and just really create the energy for a live show because for myself, when I go to live shows, it's that first song is always such a big determinant on how the rest of the show is going to go because it sets the tone. It sets the energy. And there are plenty. There are a good number of bands I've seen mess it up, but I've seen a good number of them where it's like they found something. And all of a sudden, it's just like the fans get real big into it. A good example of that would be... Um, breaking benjamin because the last time i saw them mm, they opened yeah. up with red cold river yeah. holy crap when else you kind of hear like the very like l- like moody and very like melodic kind of style that it starts with and you're just like holy shit all of a sudden you start seeing people in the crowd just like separate we're just like oh we're waiting for ben bro you start screaming and just smash into each other no, the, the bigger the better and then shortly after that she starts uh lightsaber dueling with uh some of the other band members if i remember correctly oh yeah but last time i saw them live i think that's what he did but yeah, yeah. no you're exactly right yeah I, I, the last time i saw them he had the, they had the whole entire like set they did like their own cover the imperial march they did a cover yeah, of yep. uh bohemian rhapsody it was just all instrumental though but all of a sudden i see ben burley take like two of these lightsabers off and he just starts having fun with them just like <laughs> okay i can kind of get behind this <laughs> that's what yeah that's what it's all about yeah but then i diving deeper into it like because we were talking about kind of want to be bringing more of like that harder sound to it to really kind of bring out that just incredible powerful feel it's like when i intros you do bring in that faster pace style with a little bit more of like a lower tune on your guitar which turns it more of like that barn burner type of a song like you were describing because it sounds like you're trying to mix like that initial 80s influence that i heard with a lot more hard rock sounds today but focusing on that faster pace with it so you're really holding true to yourself on this one you're talking about trying to create that barn burner kind of feel of a song to really intro a show with yeah definitely yeah. and when it comes to the hard rock stuff and i'm certain that all the other guys would say this too i think we were very much a hard rock band i think in this album we were experimenting a lot and and trying to find our sound but I will say that the the next record that we're working on, a lot of the songs are in drop C, drop A, drop D, kind of runs the gamut too. So that's why I think this song in particular kind of represents us more because this is kind of the direction we go in. The first record was just a, a taste and maybe some homage to some of our influences, but the heavier stuff and mm-hmm. some of the harder stuff, I think is definitely where we lean. And one thing to add on that too is like when you're talking about this being your first album, it's yeah, you're going to try out a bunch of different things. You're going to try and make sure you can find your sound. You're not going to want to just like create the same thing over and over. You're not going to want to create the same 12 songs and have them sound the same. Like this is like this is our sound. And all of a sudden it's like, 
okay, but you basically made the same album. No, you want to make sure you like yep. can diversify and all of a sudden it's like, okay, now we know all, we have all these different influences from each individual. We're going to put them into our songs. We're going to see what we can all meld together to really find out what we can create as our base sound. And then once you get that down, all of a sudden you can add more influence in there and play off them as well. And basically, instead of trying to take take what you know and meld it into your own sound, now you have your own sound. Now you're expanding what your sound is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I've seen plenty of bands do that as well. It's like you take a look at their first album. It's like, I'm trying to think of a good example. Take a look at a band like Ice Nine Kills. Their first album is like a, a ska punk album. It's like, if you, if you listen to the Silver Scream, it's like, how the hell did they get from there to there? But mm-hmm. yeah, it worked. It worked out so well. I yeah. think the <laughs> things I was thinking of in that vein too is like with Audio Slave, for example, like the first album essentially sounds like a lot of Rage instrumentals with Chris Cornellis on the vocals. But I feel like on their second album, Out of Exile, they kind of came into their own like sound that I really associate Audio Slave with with the first one's kind of like, oh, they probably had a bunch of these Rage songs that they didn't get to do anything with and Chris Cornell probably put lyrics over them and that's how they got that. But the second song, the second album is really like them coming together and writing stuff as a band, which I think I'm really excited for, you know, whatever EP or album we come out with next because we haven't really, the songs we're writing now are the first ones we're writing like with our new drummer. So this is like truly like all of the core guys influences coming together now. So I'm really excited to see where that goes. Yeah. And it, again, it allows you to really hone in your own sound and also play off with that as well. That all of a sudden, you know, you're creating this, 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 this. And all of a sudden now we've got all this, we got this, we got the sound, we've got what we want. Mm-hmm. And now we can yeah. start adding more things into it and playing with other things, but we know what the core of our sound is so that we can experiment, but also experiment really well. Mm-hmm. There you go. Now going back into Sensation X, we talk about the uh, intro. Like looking at the verses, I really put you guys in the verse here because you maintain the pace and the styling that, of that intro. And while it may seem like there's really no transition from the intro to the verse on this one, there really doesn't need to be because the purpose to keep that faster pace going the rest of the song is meant to show you that your heart is going to be beating the whole entire way through this song. Mm-hmm. So I love the fact that you kind of kept. Like really, you didn't really transition from the intro to the, to the verse. You just kind of just went full force into it. In your face. That's what the song was meant to do. That's <laughs> what so we went for. <laughs> and so I like, you went the, for I like and the you... heart beating thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it yeah, definitely has that feel. Because <laughs> again, like I was listening, I was thinking about like a live show too. It's like that's like this is the type of song like when you just go from like intro to chorus, like your heart's gonna keep feeling that adrenaline going. It's gonna keep feeling that energy. It's, even as a fan, it's just like you're just gonna want to keep listen you want to you know keep going crazy in the crowd hell if you see the big 300 pounder in the mosh pit this is gonna be somewhere you're gonna want to just <laughs> knock his ass over and you're gonna feel like you can do it and most of the time you're gonna end up bouncing off him and landing flat on your ass but you know what you try yeah. you yeah. try let's go <laughs> <laughs> and now something that patrick was talking about with the pre-chorus and how that kind of transitions everything as well into the chorus and how you guys were really working hard to try and figure out how to make this work and you guys think that you this you really found something that can really work and that's something i do want to talk about specifically on this because what i thought about it was is i love the fact that it kept the pacing of the song overall because again you want to have that as a in your face style and if you want to try and come up with a good transition from verse to chorus you're going to want to keep that certain pacing in there and i really did like it but it does strip away a little bit of the rest of the instrumentation and i really like the drum answer because the stare the snare drum stuck out more and the guitar is playing that lower tune but the pan the pacing i was said pandemic my god i'm sorry my <laughs> mind here but the pacing maintained the same speed so the transitions worked incredibly well from that pre-chorus stance so i was like dang this really stuck out to me a whole lot thanks uh, <laughs> that's super rewarding <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah yeah <laughs> We're glad because we slaved over it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here to tell you guys that it was it was totally worth it. Thanks, man. <laughs> there we go. You can use that as like a little like a win for the day kind of thing. You got a board. It's like what happened today? Pre chorus or pre chorus transition on Sensation X. Yeah, yeah. certified. Finally. good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling my mom right after this to tell her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have, you, have your have your cat put it on Twitter? Oh <laughs> hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> The cat, cat fans love the band, man. Hey, some, sometimes cat <laughs> fans like just folky music, indie music. Sometimes cat <laughs> fans love hard rock. You never know. 
Nope. All over the place. <laughs> plus, if you, get a, if you can get a video of your, of your cat actually like going crazy or like jamming out to one of your songs, I mean, that's going to just set the world on fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll it's happen gonna, one day. It, it's good. It's going to set the, the cat fandom all over. <laughs> <laughs> My cat nip in uh, here. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. One, one thing I do want to talk about is the chorus on this one, because I'm not going to lie. This one did throw me off a little bit because I was expecting them to just like, amplified the energy even further and to see something with like some of those like rapid drum fills to amplify the chorus overall however you kind of kept it just in line with like what the verses were doing in terms of just overall style overall pacing so i was like i was like expecting them to just kind of even keep it amping up even more but then again you guys kept it with like that same consistent feel so your heart was still beating throughout the whole entire song However, just like with the drum fills, especially in the pre-chorus, I'm like, I was expecting like basically just to go even crazier, but Mm -hmm. it kind of just stayed that consistent, going to keep your heart being, be hard rock in your face kind of style. So I, again, I was a little thrown off by it, but it wasn't something that was going to complete, in my opinion, completely derail the song because it wasn't what I was expecting. It it did work out well, but it's just like, I was like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. And then it was like, oh, oh, there we go. And so it was like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. yeah, I think that was another one that, uh, I mean, that course in particular was just something that came s- supernaturally. It wasn't something that we were really thinking about super hard. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's, all, that's all I got. That's where it came from. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate uh, you pointing it out because I think um, – there was a little bit of sense like of not of trying to keep the same like pacing throughout the whole thing. Cause it is very much a straightforward song. Like you, um, and when you listen to it, you kind of know what you're getting. Um, but it's, it's also like keeping the pacing up, just like you said, like trying to keep that heartbeat going the whole time. And I, I'm glad we accomplished that too i'm sorry if we disappointed you <laughs> no it's, basically what i'm saying is like i'm not disappointed with it it's just oh, the yeah. reason why i brought it up is basically because if i, if I think about it, it's like on this like if i'm gonna take a look at songs i'm gonna dive deep into them especially oh, yeah. talking with you guys mm-hmm. it's i'm i'm gonna want to be comp- I, i'm gonna want to put my opinion out there but i'm gonna want to be honest with it because if i'm not honest with it then it's like you know what's really the what's really the point kind of thing because i i've had a band they're an alternative rock band from italy like they sent me their stuff to, if i could listen to it and the first song they sent me i was like this is definitely something that i really just don't care for it just really didn't strike a chord with me however i listened to something else that they had that had like some like it was like alternative rock with metalcore inspiration to it and i'm like holy crap we've got you've got that and okay <laughs> like it just threw me off and i talked about them i talked with them in the podcast as well and it was like we talked about the song that i really didn't care for and the song that i really did like but it was just something where it just again you're hearing an opinion but also yet yeah, i always tell you i always like to say remember when you're talking to someone like me it's like i love hard rock i love punk rock i fell in love with metal core, so you can kind of see where my ears and where my tendencies tend to lie on some of these things yeah, but yeah. We, we love doing a deep dive like this, too, because let's be honest, it's hard to get people to really dissect your music like this. So the honesty is honestly exciting to hear because we haven't yeah. heard, we haven't heard it yet. So we, we need that kind of feedback. Yeah, that's I, what I'm I, here for. I love just hearing you talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. So, well, if you love hearing me talk about it, how about we jump into the vocals on this one to really go deeper oh, into this one? <laughs> So on this one, much like with the rest of the instrumentation, it kind of followed suit where I like your vocals on the verses more than I did on the chorus. And the reason why is because like when I you're in the verses, you're playing with more pitches and more dynamic style with those verses. And it really made the verses of this song stand out, especially because you have the rapid pacing behind it and your vocals kind of like especially help with that, like driving the energy, driving the heartbeat because of the changes in pitches like it was like going for a ride on this thing. It was like being on a freaking roller coaster, like, ah, corkscrew, ah, backflip. Okay, now we're stuck at the top Final Destination style. <laughs> <laughs> I like that in a way, though. But yeah, but thanks, man. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I had. To, I just want to make a Final Destination reference mostly because I, I think I watched the fourth one and the third one yesterday. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. But uh, yeah, uh, trains going by me right now. Hopefully that's picking up. Oh, yeah. 
it was a quick one. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this one is like super fun to uh, come out uh, live to and sing as well. I mean, we already said we love mm-hmm. using it as an opener, but I can really like kind of get loud with this one uh, right off the bat and like show a lot of energy. And uh, during the chorus, I can, I can run around and get people hyped up. And that's it really allows me to do that as well as uh, be fun to sing. So I, I like it a lot. That's a good thing as well, because especially if you're going to come out again, like we were talking about, like this is going to be the song that you're going to intro your shows to. Again, mm-hmm. like we were talking about earlier, just, you know, you want to have something that is going to set the tone for the show the rest of the way. And if this is going to be something that allows you to get out there, get the energy amped up and just run around on stage like a lunatic and act like I'm trying to think who runs around on stage and acts like an absolute lunatic. Um Shoot, I don't know. I haven't. It's it's yeah. been a while since I've been to a concert. Now, no, I mean, there's like so many. It's hard to think. <laughs> I, I know. I'm trying to think yeah. of like someone who I saw that was an absolute. Like I, I'll throw Ronnie Radke in there because when I saw him, he was yeah. just an absolute lunatic on stage. And I, I even even though he was sick at the time too, he just went nuts. I'm like, I can get behind that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're all about too. I think Pat would definitely be the the Ronnie Radke of the band. Too. Like we we definitely pride ourselves in our live show because we like to jump around and stuff. But usually Pat's head looks like he's about to fall off his shoulders because he's he's, <laughs> he's goes hard yeah, yeah. He, he's all over the place yeah and then that, the next couple of days i regret it but you know it's worth it in the moment <laughs> oh that was like me back in a couple about a month ago now because there was a show up in green bay with uh, a group of girls their band is called gold frankincense and myrrh and i've been working i've been working with them like a year and a half now on the on some of the stuff and it was like i was supposed to see him three times this year and i was like okay it's gonna be my first show since march uh yeah i'm going but you know, gotta gotta protect against you know the the, the corones. So yeah. I had one of those like face masks that made me look like I was like Guy Fox. And I had a hat on, so all you could see was my eyes. And all of a sudden, I was like, okay, here I am on here I am right next stage. All of a sudden, it's like they start going absolutely hard. I'm like, okay, I start like head banging. After the second song, I'm like, I thought my neck is gonna hurt so damn much in the morning. It, I'm gonna regret this. And then all of a sudden I thought, you know what? I haven't done this in four months. I don't regret this. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, we can't wait for live shows again. Yeah, especially with Absolutely. Guy, like, it's like, it looks like a guy Fox, like here down and all of a sudden all you can see is his eyes just like going ham. It was like, who the hell is this guy? I'm like, it's, it's, it's me, the guy that if they well, probably would end up like, if this was a full on show, like we were supposed to do like the week beforehand at, uh, or actually, no, it was that week actually at Rockfest in, uh, Kadat, Wisconsin. <laughs> It had been like a bigger stage. I'm like, you probably would have seen someone get massively hurt in the pit. And 99% out of, 99 out of 100 times, it would have been me. But it would have been okay. So don't worry about it. Yeah, that's a sight, man. <laughs> it is. I've, I've, got, I've got injury stories all over. Almost breaking my nose, black eyes, uh, giant cuts above my eye. I mean, it happens. We got to get you out to one of our shows. We need somebody to light the crowd up a bit. Right. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> That's where I come into play because even at that show, there was some people were walking around right before the girls went on. They're like, okay, when they, we get a mosh pit going, who's going to be the guy that destroys everybody? And all of a sudden, people are looking at me. I'm like, guys, I'm like six, I'm like six foot, six one, like 185 pounds. Like, I'm usually not the guy that destroys people. I'm usually the guy that's like the wild card where I can knock down, every, I can knock down almost everybody, but I can also get knocked down at the same time, too. So it's, <laughs> it, you never know what the hell you're going to get, but it's still a lot of fun. And also, it's like, come on. Let's go. Just start pushing people around. Heck, there was a uh, like back in January. Of course, this is back before BC, before Corona. But uh, <laughs> yep. there was a little like festival here in in Milwaukee. It was very small, but I think they called it Mitten Fest for some reason. I don't know what it was, but there was like some like local punk rock band that was playing like a little stage, and they had like fifty people in there. And my buddy, who doesn't like punk rock at all, looked at me and said, "Dude." Let's start, a, let's start a mosh pit during their last song. And all of a sudden you hear him say, this is going to be our last song. And he's like, we got to go. I'm drunk at tequila at this point. So I'm like, dude, let's go. So all of a sudden we get in there. He's like, how do we start the mosh pit? And I just shove him into somebody. Next thing you know, you got to like. That's how you it, do it. Yeah. It, it's, it's in the cold. It's January. It's starting to snow. And there's a 50 person mosh pit going. And I've got a, like a shaker bottle full of like tequila and whatever the hell I can also get put in there in my hand. Did not drop the <laughs> bottle though. So I was really proud of myself. <laughs> well, being awesome. being the wild card, that's your role. That's what you have to do. You can't expect anything from you. I'm like Charlie Kelly, wild card, bitches! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to make a Charlie Kelly reference in here. We're doing, we're going strong today. Final destination, got that too. You know. <laughs> oh God, I'm I'm rolling right now. This is fantastic. But I, I do want to finish up on uh, Sensation X. Just really, just like finishing out because. 
I, I talked a little bit about the chorus when it came to the instrumentals and with the vocals, I kind of felt a little bit the same way where it threw me off a bit because the pitch on your vocals with the uh, with the chorus, the, they re- remain rather consistent and it did match with the instrumentation well, so I do applaud you for that with matching everything up and making sure that everything worked together so you're basically listening to what the song wants you to do. However, much like, again, I was like, I was expecting like to really go amped up with it. But again, it kind of just kept in line. So again, your heart was still beat throughout the whole entire song. However, you could have gone one of two ways. I was expecting you to go one way. You guys went the, I was expecting you guys to go the crazy route. You guys kept with the more consistent route. Again, both work, but it was just something I was like, I was wondering what would have happened if you would have went the other route on that. Yeah, um, I think that um, speaks to kind of like our where our songwriting is going now. A lot of our new stuff, I feel like we're kind of getting crazier with it. Um, like it goes, it builds and it goes harder, like in the later half of the song, uh, a lot more often. And I think um, that's because we want to bring intensity even more with this next project we're working on. So I think instead of uh, and I don't want to say like taking the safer route, but like keep the more consistent route is kind of like what you were using is like, um, for like something like sensation X is like for this new stuff, something that really kind of heightens each song, uh, to another level. And hopefully we accomplish that. We're going to yeah. put, hopefully get some new stuff out soon. So. Yeah, because don't worry, like, in my overall, like, overall, I do like this song because I do like the fact they use that consistent use in the pacing throughout the verses and the pre-chorus along with the diverse vocal range because everything melded in together. Uh, just with the chorus, I was expecting to see something that was a little bit more amplified instead of consistent. Yeah. Much like, kind of like, especially like with the dynamic vocal range, like another kind of sky that you had in the chorus, like something like that. Again, that's my opinion, though. So it's just, it, that's kind of where it's coming from. It's just, I was expecting something else than what, I, than what was actually there. That's pretty yeah. much it yeah like we said we appreciate just hearing you like give your opinion about it because we like to hear what people think like yeah. we're yeah we're not like stuck in our own heads about it you know like i want to know exactly. yeah, yeah. I, I wish we had time to go through each song with it, to be honest <laughs> if, if we did it would be a six-hour podcast honestly. oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> and like when i do like album reviews and everything when i like on the youtube channel like like how deep i go i went into those two songs that's what i do for every single song mm-hmm so mm-hmm. it's like I've got like sh- like it, like for my um because I'm trying to think the one I did for the uh, that actually came out or released actually eight minutes ago but I got to put that on Instagram and Twitter more done here <laughs> that it's out but I reviewed um, an album from a Minnesota band called Throw the Fight okay. and it was like yep. if you look at my if you look at my sheet for uh, the album review just like my normal note sheet it was probably about on a on a Microsoft Word document like 11 to 12 pages long. Wow. Yeah. But then when I did my script for the video because I don't want to go through every single song that deep because otherwise the video is going to be like 30 40 minutes and I my thought process is not many people really want to listen to an album review that goes that deep. So yeah. I kind of I kind of just shorten up a little bit where it's like I look at three different parts. I look at the construction, composition, instrumentation of the, of the album. Then I take a look at the vocal per- performance, take a look at the themes of the album and how it fits with the styles. Then I always do like an overall rating, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, because there's going to be things I like and dislike and then do a final thought kind of thing to wrap it all together in a nice little bow. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> if like when it comes to new albums, like I will go that deep into them. And it takes God, it takes like four to five hours just to complete one of those. Damn, that's what some people uh, need yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, that's. I mean, that's good work by you. Just like going, going in, giving that much detail, and then having to like cut it down. That's that's crazy. This, and this is also for me doing this. Like when I started this, it was like I had no idea what I was doing. It just kind of built on my own. Like what you guys were saying, it's like you know, at the radio station, like you learn so much about music through just being there and just yeah. hearing different things and getting different influences. Like I learned so much about this just by doing this and giving it a shot. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I think that's anything too. Same concept applies to the band. Absolutely, yeah, that's fair. And then to, let's to to wrap up this whole entire album in a bow. From my perspective, I did listen to the rest of it, and I did create like a synopsis review for it. So if you guys oh, want to yeah. hear oh, how yeah. I put it out there, <laughs> all right, here this. we go. <laughs> I, this I put overall you can tell this the album has its roots in 80s rock by the overall tone of the guitars and the state on a standard basis and on the energy and pace at every single song however that does not tell the whole story what crooked ways is able to do is blend that 80s rock inspired sound with other genres that they like like 2000s pop punk and a song like another kind of sky 
some more uh, heavy metal and a metalcore inspiration, a song like Second Stage. I did like that one. Thank and you. And even more. <laughs> one other influence I've seen on their uh, songs is influence from Green Day that kind of has that more rock and pop rock somewhat bass. And I know you brought up Green Day earlier on some of this stuff, yeah. so I can see where that comes in. How all these work together is through the overall pacing that creates a lot of opportunities for the band. Zach's vocals really show a lot on this album that he has a mixture of that 80s hair metal vocal style with a little bit of a hard rock tone in there and uses his ability to change pitch very well on the majority of the tracks. And I'm, I have to call out New Year's Day here as well as that acoustic song has the faster pacing that really makes the song stand out more than many other acoustic songs that you'll see on albums that the big boys and the big girls have coming out with. So I really did like that acoustic song. It was fantastic. This is a great effort from the band, and I'm curious to see how they're able to take that influence and that bass with the pacing and mix it with more genres going forward and mastering the influence they have mixed with thus far. So overall, boys... Oh, well, thank you. Incredibly we well it. done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that... More trains. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish his thought, I think. That means a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hope that's what his thought was. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been trying to mute my mic a little bit to try to cut down on the train sounds. But, uh, man, they're really going today. But <laughs> It's okay. It, 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 keeps it, it keeps it real. It keeps, it, keeps this podcast legit. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, yeah. I just want to, yeah. Thank you for, uh, first of all, like listen to our stuff. Thanks for, uh, vibing with it. Like it, it's uh, super cool to hear, uh, people's uh, opinions on it in general mm-hmm. and just like giving it a, 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 a positive review like that. It was like super cool. So I'm glad you like felt a lot of the stuff that we were trying to put forward with it. Yeah. It means well, we <laughs> did something that resonated with some other people. So that's really cool. Yeah. 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 And I'll put it this way. I can't be the only one that that's happened to. So I also want to thank mm-hmm. Nick for, you know, wherever he is. And if, if, if it's, I mean, on my screen, it's over this way, but <laughs> on the video, it might be over somewhere else. I have no idea how it ends up, but I, I, I hope that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> but again, thank you for actually sending me this because I'm not sure when or where I would have found out about this, but just saying, Hey, check this out. I'm like, okay. And then all of a sudden, usually when I do that, it always, it, it, 99, or actually like 90% of the time, it or t- turns out to be pretty dang good. So I'm like, let's just keep on rolling. And I mean, you definitely hit that 90% category where I'm like, shoot, we got to talk about this even more. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Yeah, we're glad. We appreciate it. <laughs> so outside of myself in the, like the last like 40 minutes where we just gushed over this, what were the what were other people thinking about this album? Like for your friends and people that listen to the band that, you know, or maybe just reach out to you like, hey, this is what I thought of the album. So what was the overall consensus from the masses? I think Pat has a good idea on that because he is absolutely the in, in many ways, like the voice of the band on, on social media and the way he sells it to people. He's almost like the sales guy too. So I think he's probably talked to more people about this album than any of us combined. So I'm, I'm yeah. also <laughs> interested to hear what he has to say. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, it's definitely been received like pretty well. I mean, I'm, I've a lot of, uh, you know, I always know a lot of people in my life and a lot of different, you know, hobbies and whatever else. And people can find like, you know, I, I have some friends that are really more into like that alt rock. I have more friends that are really more into like the hardcore sound. And I think each person that listens to it finds at least one or two songs they like from it. Um, which we kind of spoke to earlier, which we're kind of trying out different things, seeing like what our sound is. So it was really cool seeing that like people could find multiple different things they liked, depending no matter what their uh, musical preference is. Uh, as far as I was going to say it earlier too, as far as like playing with the album live and everything, it was kind of uh, ironic in a way that's called Time to Panic. And we named it back in like September of last year. And then it came out at the end of February. And then a month later, like people were really panicking about stuff, you know? <laughs> um, so we have, we only got to really play that one show post album release. We, ha- we, we were going to play a festival this summer. We had our album release show. We were going to have a show at like this bigger uh, venue near us. Uh, so unfortunately that's all being postponed. Um, so it would have been cool to get people's views that way. But I mean, what I've heard online and through different promotions we've been doing thus far, I mean, we've done, um, two different live streams so far. The first one uh, was for a compilation a local record label put out. So they did like a live stream. And then we actually did like an all covers live stream last week where we got to show off a lot of those influences playing songs by like Weezer and Journey, uh, System of a Down, um, 
all those kinds of bands. And we actually ended it with a premiere of one of our like unreleased songs that we have so far. It's kind of like, hey, we feel really confident in this song. So here's a sneak peek at it. Um, and the, the, uh, the reactions for that have been pretty positive as well. So what we've been able to do uh, with the promotion in these circumstances has been overall pretty positive. So I'm excited to see kind of where our promotion and where, um, you know, our boundaries are pushed from here. Yeah. Um, I just have like one more thing to add to that is like Pat is like also like, I mean, we all have kind of given the album to like people who like have no reason to like uh, compliment us, like who don't know us like at all. <laughs> you know, like we've shown like songs to people who like don't know who we are. And so that really gives us some like an idea of like what someone completely removed from our lives, like think of this. And we've always heard back from them, like really positive, uh, just uh, th- anything they've said about it has been positive, And that really is cool to us to like think that, wow, they don't have to say something nice, but they did. And they, they really enjoy what we're doing and we enjoy what we're doing. And just like something like a song like second stage that is like definitely on the heavier side of stuff that we do. Like That's my mom's friend, favorite song on the album. Yeah. <laughs> Pat's mom's favorite song and uh, friends that of mine that like don't listen to like heavy music at all, like have told me like that's their favorite one. And so I was like, must have done something right with that one. If people like that. So that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. People are liking that one. They really don't listen to heavy stuff. It's like, yeah, you, you definitely did something right on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. <laughs> I, would, I would have to say, and uh, when it comes down to it, I mean, like I'll, I'll use other bands as an example as well for this, but there are every other band it's they've start they've started off that point where it's like all of a sudden like they're sending their music to people and then when they first hear people talk about their music and all of a sudden it's like we've never met these people before and it's always going to be something that like energize you and even as a fan it's just like you always remember like your favorite bands like when you first ever heard them mm-hmm. and it's just something that kind of just always sticks with you so because using like for me for example I remember the first time I heard ever heard Rise Against was I I ended up playing Prayer of the Refugee and Guitar Hero 3 because it was a bonus song and my brother liked it. I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, let's, let, yeah. I'm like, oh, let's play. And all of a sudden I'm playing. I'm just like, oh, I'm liking this. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, all of a sudden it's like I'm going to high school and all of a sudden like it was like the, it was like the summer where like every like alternative rock and like no, not hard rock station was playing Savior by Rising Against like every single day. And her dad go to school or come home. At least one time I heard that song and it was just like, everyone turn off. I'm like, no, 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 no. I want to listen to this. And <laughs> Guitar yeah. Hero was the gateway to many good discovered bands back when we were all in high school. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah it sure. was. Oh my God. It was, it was, it was like, cause, I'm, cause that's how I got into, that's how I got into like my first like be- big band where it was like, I f- really liked them. Cause it was actually before rising. It was disturbed. It was like, that's how I got into them was just, holy shit, here, here comes this band. It's just, this is awesome. You know, I'm loving this. And all of a sudden, you know, I go to a Catholic school and they think I'm the <laughs> devil. <laughs> oh, it man. happens. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> but, oh, well, you know, only got in trouble for that, like, a couple of times. Oh, well, no there big deal. Worth <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> T- to- totally worth it. And then, like, I think, and then, like, the theology teacher tried pushing some, like, Christian music on me and it was just like... No, not not this stuff. Not Religion this stuff. Creed? Nah, <laughs> couldn't do it. <laughs> no, and, and it's and now it's just like I'm I'm all like now it's like skills one of my favorite bands. It's like why don't you push me? Why don't you push me in that direction? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally wrong direction. <laughs> you could have gotten into that shit, but nope, nope. You have to you have to send me like this like really overt like really nice like acoustic kind of something. Like no, this just this just doesn't work. But or if you would have sent me like early under oath or I mean even now it's just like because. I've, I've talked to a lot of bands that have those influence in there. I listen to them and then it's because I've got another band that I've, I've interviewed one this past Sunday. I've got another interview tomorrow with a band called The Protest. So it's just like, oh, it's like I'm, I'm loving this sound. It's just, yeah, yeah. why don't you push me in that direction? But then again, please, I'm thankful you didn't push me in that direction because I love the serve and it probably would have been like, okay, playing guitar, you're like, okay, maybe I wouldn't have liked Rise Against as much as I do. So, oh, well. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to live shows for you guys, because I do want to, once this whole entire pandemic shit is over, which I hope is soon because man, I've had too many concerts that's been canceled. And you, I know you guys have had shows that have been can't or postponed or canceled as well. So what I want to know is what's an average show for you guys like, so that when I go to see you guys, I know what to expect. And I know how much I have to get amped up for it in terms of when sensation next starts going 
how hard we had to get the crowd going to basically try and run into each other as much as possible. <laughs> well, I, I feel like unfortunately we haven't we haven't had a show where the crowd is because we've either been you know we've, we've had very few shows where we're the the main band that's playing. Um, so I feel like it's, it's almost like especially challenging if you're opening for someone else to like get them as amped for the music as you are, especially if they don't know you. Hmm. Um, but, but like I, with oh, that, I mean, we like had like a bunch of people like oh yeah ha- like have like really like turned on the energy like once we start playing, and I, I mean I don't want to like. Um, like toot our own horn a little too much there but like there there is like a cool like feeling when like people are standing around for a while and then we can finally get people to start jumping around and moving then Mm -hmm. feels like we've like really brought the energy and we can we do our job as like an opener and like get them ready for the the big guys come out after us you know i think we're still starting out I think for live shows to to answer your question like what you can expect is always energy because almost every time we get off a stage, it's never really, oh, hey, that second song you played was awesome. That third song you played was awesome. It's always your energy. And that's always the first thing that we hear. That's always the first piece of feedback that we get. It was like, I watched you guys because you were jumping around on stage and you got my attention. And then we realized, hey, your music is pretty good too. So it's just I mean, us having fun up there, but it's also a way to to draw people in, and and that's really what gets them going. I mean, let's be honest. It with some local shows, sometimes like like Pat said, it's it's hard to get them going, but eventually they will once they warm up to you a little bit. Yeah, oh, I get we're I'll always, say. like moving around too. I mean, like I'm always jumping around. I, I think I, I look at other bands and even ones that we share bills with. And I'm like, I can't understand like. And even like some professionals, as, as like a musician, I can't imagine like just standing still playing. I, I feel like I'm always moving around, always like running in the nick or hitting him with my bass head. You know, it's like, I feel like we're always all, you know, except for Steve, because he's, you know, shadow behind the drum set. But I'm sure if he could, he'd be moving around too. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think a great example of a band that kind of has like that live show is absolutely insane energy. And then a lot of people end up really enjoying their music because of that would be a band like Beartooth. Cause I remember oh, yeah. seeing him live and just yeah. like seeing Caleb show him up there. He is just like, I don't know how to describe, but he is just the craziest motherfucker on stage. I mean, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure if you gave him a glass bottle, he would smash it over his head and not think anything of it on stage. Oh, yeah. oh, but it's yeah. like, but it's like dry, <laughs> seeing that, like seeing that live. I mean, I've, I've liked Beartooth before that though, when I saw them live, but it was just like, just seeing that show live, it was just, it, it it was the thing that stuck out the most to me was how insane that was. And this was on a bill with I Prevail in a day to remember and Beartooth set stuck out the most. But where I'm kind of leading to that is when you're on the bill and when you're not the headliner and there are people that are there to mostly to see the headliner, maybe not to see you. But all of a sudden you come on and you bring the energy and people are really getting into it. I mean, they're going to really start feeling the music because of how much energy you put out there and they're going to feed off of that as well so then when it comes down to it at the end of the show maybe the band that was on the top of the bill was their favorite band however they're gonna remember the fact that you play because i remember uh like an irish punk band that played that opened up for rise against like nine years ago i still remember their name because of how much fun their set was like i still remember that and this isn't like this is nine years ago i still remember it yeah. Yep. And I think that's definitely the goal with like be, like being in the position we're at now where we know we're not going to be uh, the biggest band on the bill. Um, but like if we can like make our presence known, I think we've like succeeded, you know. And ultimately, at the end of the day, like we, we do this to play live. I, I think any musician who's going out there saying like, oh, man, I want to join a band so I can go record in the studio yeah. could be could be lying. I'm sure they're out there, but I mean, like what you, what you really want to do is is get out there and play and play for people. And sometimes it doesn't even matter if you have, uh, if you have 30 people in the crowd moving or 300 people, if you're out there and in most cases, as long as it's in front of somebody, us, especially like we, we just have a good time with it. We just enjoy playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even as a fan too, it's just like when you go to those shows that are those have more energy shows when you're going crazy, you're having a good time. Especially for someone like myself who just enjoys going to mosh pits because it's just I don't know, it's a freeing feel. I can freely like I can fully experience music by slamming into somebody. I don't know why. I absolutely love it. But because I'm I'm gonna use uh, another show I went to. It was um I saw this was back in May of last year. 
It was Seven Dust and In This Moment was the headliner. I, re- okay, I enjoyed okay. Seven Dust so much more because it was so much more energetic from Lejean and Quinn Lowry and the guys because just seeing them up there too, like they were moving around on stage and I mean, I, I swear to God, Lejean was probably like probably like sweat like a quart or a gallon off on stage. Like it was awesome. All of a sudden In This Moment comes on, it's much more theatrical. It's just like, mm-hmm. it's just the energy just went like, yeah. But it's like I remember specifically <laughs> seeing Seven Dust from that show. So when it comes to it, it's just again, I love the energy, and I feed. And as a fan, I feed off of it. And I've seen other times where all of a sudden the crowd, like the opener, brought so much energy, and the crowd got so into it that you couldn't stop it. All of a sudden, here comes the headliner, and the crowd still had that kind of energy. And all of a sudden, the headliner was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> look at this and all of a sudden they amped up their energy which made us amp up our energy and by the time the show was halfway through i mean people like bodies were literally flying all over the place but it was fun as all hell unfortunately it was not part of that body's flying experience because i did have a giant cut above my eye after after the burial play and i was looking like a pirate because i had like a flannel tied around my eye i was just like Hee-hee. but i didn't want to bust it open and bleed over everybody that's kind of bad <laughs> I, I have a feeling though if you were in eastern pennsylvania you would have been at a lot of the same shows that uh that i've been at too zach and zach and i also saw the same a day to remember Beartooth show that that you were at too not the same show but the same tour and yeah it, it's all about what you're into too and i personally have realized like being in a band how much you really aspire to be like where your influences come from and go for some of those tastes. I mean, I personally have a lot of the the same influences that you do. And I I think the energy that we put out on stage reflects that. But if you are a Maria Brink from in this moment who made of, who might've grown up on theater, I don't know what she's been raised on. Uh, But that's something that you would want to do. And for some people it hits the mark, but for some people it doesn't. So it's I just find that interesting how it works out. Yeah, and I knew like a lot of people that went to that in this moment show too was just they were in they were there just because they loved the basically like the set and the pageantry and, and the whole entire show that's around it. Yeah. Myself personally, that's not really my thing. However, it's just something where it's like if because they were gonna play a show here in Milwaukee, or this one was actually gonna headline a show here in Milwaukee again in middle of April, <laughs> and Black Veil Brides was gonna be their opener, and I wanted to go because I'd never seen Black Veil Brides and I wanted to see them live. And I'm like, oh, but I gotta see this moment again for like the third time in two because they opened up for Disturb at the end of Disturb's tour, and I got to go see that. But them as an opener for Disturb actually worked because Disturb comes out like now with their set, it's a lot bigger, there's a lot more stuff going on, but they still have a they still have they don't it's not as pageantry, it's more energy and like all of a sudden inside the fire comes. Dan Donigan starts playing the solo and also there's blasting fire coming down. I felt like almost got like first degree burns off of it, but you know what happens. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we're into. If we could have pyro in our shows, we would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like a show with some good production. I think A Day to Remember has a good balance of it where they, like, have, like, really big production, but they make it, like, really fun at the same time because they've had some, like, weird, like, sets and stuff on their stage in the past, and it's, like, always really cool. So, yeah, I, I mean, like, yeah. I was unfortunate able to do the crowd surfing the crowd surfer thing because I ended up in the front row when that happened. I'm like, well, that doesn't yeah. make any sense. And then they started throwing the toilet paper around during uh, All Signs Points of Lauderdale. I'm like... This is funny. Now I'm thinking about it like as of like back in March, I thought about beginning like, well, that was wasteful, but still <laughs> funny. True. Yeah. <laughs> you can sue them now. Yeah. I just remember when they did the house party tour, like for it had to be like 2013 or something like that. Like they had like a whole like house set behind them and the garage that would lift up and they came out of the garage. And then at one of the songs uh, called the danger and starting a fire, they set the house on fire. I was like, <laughs> good, good shit. <laughs> yeah. I've ever yeah. seen them with that tour, Zach. You, you what? That's the one and only time I've ever seen a day to remember. Oh yeah. That was a good tour. Yeah. I, I really went cause I like the one years a lot, you know, and then from my, yeah. Life, so yeah. I was like, all right, I'll go see them. And then my girlfriend at the time really liked all time low. So we were there for both of them and just, you know, pierce the veil on a day to remember kind of the icing on the cake. So, Oh yeah. This is like a good day. Yeah. <laughs> well, cause even like for shows, like cause I, I was talking about like how I liked like what seven dust was doing, where it was just like, they were up there just playing their hearts out, just going nuts. Like rise against is another great example of that. And then the data remember when it was like, they didn't do as much, especially when I saw them. Cause they just kind of had like the, the video board in the back. 
So, mm-hmm. but, but it was still like, I, I love when bands just go up there and it's like, and, and Bear is another one. They just go up there and they just give all the energy out there because of the crowd feeds off it. But I also like the ones that when they do like, you have more of that like set, like the setup to it, but the energy is still brought. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Per, yeah. like, for like two bands especially come to mind for that with me. And it's Motionless and White and Ice Sign Kills. Like seeing both them play live, like it's because I did it in October. Now that was perfect for both those bands, even in October. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. But just seeing like the stage of like everything all oh, had that like the spooky Halloween kind of feel to it. And just seeing all the production behind it, especially Ice Nine Kills all of a sudden, all the different costume changes from Spencer Charnas, all like all the guys dressed as different characters as well. But the absolute energy that was put out in that show, oh my God. Like I, I couldn't get enough of it. So it's like I like that. I like both styles, but you got to bring me like that full on energy. And I just get really into that sh- kind of show. So you guys are always bringing the energy on your shows. I'm like, mm. I want to see this live. Oh yeah. And yeah. I'm bouncing up and down right now. Absolutely. In excitement. <laughs> it's crazy how some bands, even just based off like reputation can just, like, even before a band starts, the crowd just starts going bonkers. Like, um, the, the first, I think the first time, one of the best times that ever happened to me was when I was in high school, I saw Rage Against the Machine and they played, at like a hip hop festival. So literally like everyone before it was like Wu-Tang Clan, Cypress Hill, Public Enemy, The Roots, like that kind of thing. And they were the headliner and there was like a 45 minute gap between them and Wu-Tang Clan. And as soon as Wu-Tang ended, there was this huge like, surge towards the stage and like it wouldn't stop for like 40 minutes. And like we still had that long until the show came on. So by the time they came on, it was like everyone had all like so much energy just like pent up for uh I think they opened with Testify, and it was like... Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> well, like, even, like, other shows, too, I'll use the Data Remember one as well, because in between I Prevail and Data Remember, like, they were playing certain songs, but every song they played was one that the crowd really got into and just had fun with. Whether it was something funny, like Backstreet Boys were just kind of trolling us. I think yeah. they even did Rick Astley, and everyone still got into it. Um, they played Numb by Linkin Park, which was perfect just because everyone was able to just like really get into it. But the last thing they played before they went on stage was Chop Suey by System of Down. Oh, nice. We got Mosh Pit <laughs> yeah. going during, in between sets. Like that's how crazy <laughs> we're. And all of a sudden, like after that song ends, all of a sudden the lights go on. All of a sudden you just see this curtain. It's all illuminated. You see the shadows and all of a sudden you just hear. <laughs> yeah. and everyone just and all of a sudden you just see where the where the pit was you just see it open up super quick and all of a sudden let's go yeah <laughs> it was always, that quick it was so much fun <laughs> <laughs> they always do an awesome live show i've seen them a few times yeah. and like they had to have had like similar like either the same playlist or like similar playlists because i feel like we heard a lot of those same songs nick like when we saw them too so they know how to get the crowd ready. Yep. Even before they come on. Yeah, mix it I up. You mentioned Chop yeah. Suey too, because that's one, that's the that's one of the covers that we do that like it's everyone super amped like whenever we play it. So that's mm-hmm. always one of my favorites to play. Oh, totally understandable. I think it made a video. It was like the best songs to play before, like like in between sets. Mm-hmm. If you're at like a rock or metal show, and I think <laughs> yeah. I had Chop Suey at number two because you'll get the craziness going. My number one one was Numb by Linkin Park because yeah. everyone lo- like everyone get- has some sort of a emotional connection to that song. Everyone's gonna belt out their best Chester Bennington, and mm-hmm. it's gonna be something that people are just gonna really get behind. But I was like, if you can get some going like Chop Suey, or you can just get like a full on mosh pit going in between sets, okay, you got some kind of crowd yeah. going. On. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> it's always a winner. Yeah. But again, it's just like you take a look at, I mean, we're talking about these concerts we've seen. We talk about the kinds of shows that we like to see all the ones with these high energy performances where, got, where the band's going out there and just having a freaking blast doing whatever they can do, just riding on adrenaline. And I absolutely love it because as a fan, you just feed off of that and it just creates that great experience to the point where you remember those more than you remember like the super duper pageantry ones but then again it, it's all about what you're into and i can yeah. see you guys are into that full-on energy kind of style and i am a fan of that <laughs> <laughs> in my southern preacher voice <laughs> <laughs> well we're glad all right guys i got one more thing i really want to cover with you guys before we say sayonara and because i got something i gotta do in like 25 minutes for this stuff so and i know you guys are an hour ahead of me so if you guys got to go to bed if your bedtimes or something or if you gotta do something with a cat uh twitter thing <laughs> like I'm, I'm not i'm not sure no, you might you, might you might you might have some yeah. chewy emails you have to uh deal with <laughs> all right so my question is 
Because as it stands right now, Time to Panic's been out for about five months. And or six months. Yeah, six months. What the hell am I talking about, man? My, my <laughs> coronavirus timeline messing me up all. But it, it's, it's been six months, about five months since everything been shut down and can't really play live music. And it's been a weird time for people. And you guys have been working on doing live streams to kind of, to promote the album. I did a, at least one show to promote the album, but I've also been talking to a lot of people online, trying to get them to listen to it. And it has worked. So my question is, is from now until live shows are able to come back and you guys are able to go crazy on stage. I'm able to get hurt in a mosh pit again. <laughs> what is the plan for crooked ways to grow their fan base and just make sure more people listen to the great music you guys got? Well, I'll be honest. I mean, being a local band too, I, I think the live show aspect of, of music is really affecting the bigger bands too, because they're playing arenas and stadiums, but from a local perspective, we, I mean, right now, as of now, we're supposed to be playing uh, a theater with, uh, uh, a, I think their build is like the, the nation's largest Metallica cover band or something like that. And it's one of the bigger venues in our area. And uh, honestly, I'm trying to look past the, the whole coronavirus thing in general, not to downplay it or pretend it doesn't exist, but still try and get some shows lined up, even if they are out in, uh, out in public, just because I think that's the best way to connect with people. Live stream is great and has a great digital reach, but, um, going back to what we were just talking about with our live shows, I, I think that's one thing that really turns heads a lot. And in terms of getting people on board with us, I, I think that's definitely the most effective route. Um, besides that, I am, constantly sliding into people's dms just like yours when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to promotion i'm no stranger uh and not afraid to to say hey check this out and doing any kind of sleuthing we can like just following some other local bands and seeing what they're doing um another day dawns for example which is how i found you um just all that kind of you got to kind of stick to what has worked in live shows but also get creative with it a little bit i think yeah. Um, and I think, uh, like, like we want to play live shows, but we want to do it safely. Um, luckily like in our areas right now, we're kind of like moving into like safer phases and things like that. And even the show that we're scheduled to play, we're not sure if it's going to be postponed or not. It could very well be, um, just, but right now we're definitely going to be playing to a limited crowd. Um, if we do play at all, but we want to, we're, we're glad that's happening because we want everyone to be safe, but we've re- really just kind of taken a liking to doing the live streams for sure. If we can keep that up, we'll just have to keep doing that. Um, and everything else we've been doing, but also taking advantage, like during quarantine, taking the time to use it to write and actually be productive and have something to come back with strong. I think that's um, our best angle right now. I think right now we have five solids. Like we have like one or two songs that are at like the, we feel pretty confident. They're probably not going to change like a ton between now and when they're actually released. And then we have two or three other ones that are kind of like floating ideas. Like we have the basic, the basic construct is there, but the solos and the exact lyrics and everything are like, we're, they're a work in progress. So we have at least five structures right now that we're working on. And like I said before too, I'm, I'm in an advantageous situation where I work in a record store. So I see people who listen to music all the time. So I'm able to kind of like push my own album sometimes. And like, I know people who come in on other tastes like, Hey, want to check out my album? It's like five bucks, you know, whatever. And because I have that personal connection with them, they'll take it anyway. And I've had a couple people come back and just say like, Hey man, like I really dug your album. Like you guys on Facebook and everything is trying to grow it the word of mouth that way, especially because the record store I work in is, local to our town still so it's still kind of getting the word out for when we eventually are able to have live shows we'll have more people that are familiar with the songs by then because that's one thing we haven't really been able to witness yet is people coming to our shows and knowing the lyrics knowing the songs and everything that's a a feeling that aside from a couple songs like another kind of sky and fade which were the first two singles um you know we've had people be able to learn them for shows but everything else it would be super cool to come back in and people knowing the lyrics or at least knowing the structure of the songs. So that'll be, that'll be a completely new cool experience that we'll have, um, post live stream world. I'm hoping. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then, and what I was going to say on that is, is basically what you guys are doing is you're taking advantage of the time you have now to maximize what you can do. So you're trying to push the album any way you can, especially online due to the fact that 
Especially when this thing started, too, because there were bands that were, like, postponing and everything. I'm like, no, 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 no. Why, why would you postpone stuff? Because everyone's sitting at home. Everyone wants, like, after two, three weeks, everyone's going to get tired of freaking Tiger King. So why don't you release new stuff? And, and, I was, and that's what, like, August Burns Red did. Like, they made sure that they released it, the band Red. They pushed theirs a couple, like, a week early. Trivium State put Buried Tomorrow. I got to give them some crap for that one because they pushed theirs back three months. It was like, uh, maybe not do that. But, uh <sighs> But it was just like when you focus in on like just making sure that you're taking advantage of the time that's there. And especially as if this continues on a little bit more into like when it gets colder outside, like of course, people are going to be stuck inside a lot more. So they're going to be on their phones again. They're going to be on their computers again and they're going to be trying to find new things. And boom, that's where you guys can kind of take that and harness it. One of the things you guys could do is like, especially on like a, I don't know, like a fate on Facebook, because I've seen this work for a lot of other bands as well is create like your own, like potentially like maybe uh jet, like Facebook group, but like maybe like, or like maybe private group, maybe non private group, whatever it might be just to kind of gather fans together where they can have another chance to talk to a little bit more directly at the same time as well. And then also you can kind of galvanize them in a way to be like, hey, request us on this station. Come on, we need your help kind of thing. And just kind of help, like help promotion that way. Because I've seen that work out incredibly. When I mentioned Kingdom Collapse earlier, that's pretty much how they how they got on um, Sirius XM Octane to be the top song for two straight weeks was because that group was galvanized and was growing and everyone started requesting it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a really good idea. Yeah. So it was incredible. It was incredible to watch firsthand. And then there was a guy that was helping them run their uh, Facebook group. And that's actually and he started adding me to all these other different groups as well. And that was like, that's how I got to interview another day. Dawn's a band called The Strangest Angels. Um, he had to be this band called Relent, who I actually he added me the day I was scheduled to interview him. So I'm like, OK, that's kind of funny. And he's added me to more, too. And I'm like, I've never gone wrong with that. So like, if you guys do something like that, it's like, OK. I've seen it work. I've seen it happen. So it's just kind of another way just to gr- bring the fans together a little bit more where you can kind of create like that group mentality kind of thing. And you can kind of help push things out like, hey, requests on this radio station if you're around kind of thing, especially being a more local band. You can really help. To, it can really help to push yourself out on local radio stations. Yeah, absolutely. Assemble the masses. <laughs> <laughs> look at me and my look at me and my econ brain working that's great <laughs> my go. college education was worth something <laughs> <laughs> and it boosts it all away <laughs> so, like, I, almost, I, I, I did i did one semester <laughs> almost oh no that's, that's what happens when you turn 21 and all of a sudden you're just like half a semester goes down the tubes just because you're just like drinking like seven nights a week <laughs> most college kids it's okay. I still pass because I think I got like a 3.2 GPA or something like that. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I had to turn around, but like that first half, I was just like, huh? <laughs> now you can do whatever you want. Now I can do whatever I want. I don't want to drink that much. You know, I got a mini fridge <laughs> sitting in the corner that's always full. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right now, if anyone wants some like Heineken or Rolling Rock or Liney's Honey Weiss or some things from Three Floyds, uh, Coors Banquet, Labatt. If you like guys like Labatt, I got that. <laughs> some good old Labatt. Labatt Blue. Oh yeah, we, that's. I, I need to just make a random run down, over to Indiana just to pick up like AKC and Ling and bring him back. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say, and we started out on this call with the Yingling, and I feel like it's a great way to kind of wrap it up because we we started, that's where we ended. So I want to get one last word from you guys. If you want to say anything as your final, you know, word to the, to the people listening, it is your time. Hit him, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I oh guess boy. So on all of our different social media, I always check out the album, uh, Time to Panic. It's on... Uh, every streaming service you can possibly think of, even Google Play, RIP in December. Um, <laughs> so check us out on all those. Uh, check out um, you know, social media. We're essentially on everything. We're the most active on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, however, we do have a Twitter. We do have a YouTube channel that has a couple of our lyric videos and has some like Studio Diary stuff on there. Um, check out our... We're on a Snapchat too, which we definitely used a lot more in our studio days, kind of Snapchat in the studio, but we're on that too. Um, so check out all of that stuff, uh, especially the album. And if you end up finding us through this podcast or through whatever avenue, give us a like on Facebook, message us. Um, one of us will answer you just kind of seeing it's cool where uh, where the likes come from, where people are listening in. Uh, it's just kind of a cool metric statistic thing that we like to look at, seeing where we're reaching. And... Uh, 
yeah, keep an eye out for more live streams, uh, live shows eventually, uh, and new music in the, uh, in the future sometimes. So keep an eye out for that as well. Yeah. Hopefully in the near future. Um, we have a lot of, uh, we will always respond like, like Pat was saying. So if you have anything, uh, you want to reach out or, um, just want to message us, we'll, we're happy to hear about it. Like give a, give the music a shot. We've got a lot of stuff on there. You might find something you like. So yeah, I guess b- building off that too, before if Nick has to say anything, um, we have merch also, we have some t-shirts, we have CDs, we have stickers, buttons, all that kind of stuff can be found on our band camp, which, and uh, the social media and the band camp and all is just crooked ways band, um, is the handle for everything. So find us on there. Um, there's like a t-shirt CD bundle, uh, that kind of thing. If you want, if you want to sign one, we have a couple signed pieces also, whatever, just let us know. But we do have uh, that kind of merch for sale if you want to support the artists in this time of no shows and no nothing. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, support your favorite local artist too. Even if it's not us, yeah. support support whoever you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well said. Well said. I'll let Nick take it. Take his last words. <laughs> my last word? Last word. <laughs> it, what, what happens? <laughs> this is um, my last word ever. Are you gonna kill no, me? No, no, not. I mean, I'm no. I'm I probably really about. Depends I'm, after this I'm, like, I'm like 800 miles away from you, so I think that's kind of impossible. Okay, just, <laughs> just checking. No, I, th- I think they pretty much covered it. Uh, branching off of supporting local bands and local artists, I would say aside from ourselves, because we can't. It, it, like as much as we want to take credit for everything, it's a lot of the the bands and the the facilities, institutions, venues, whatever you want to call them in our area that have really helped us too. So if you're a band in the Eastern PA area looking to record, check out King Studios. That's where we did our album. And if you're looking for more music, if you if you dig ours and you're looking for, for a little bit more, uh, Violet Nine is uh, another band in our area, great friends of ours. They have some killer tunes. Another Day Dawn's another band that's uh, taking a chance on us, brought us out for a show. They have awesome stuff, like we mentioned before. Um, and honestly, uh, the, the whole Eastern PA scene has a lot of good talent and on, on the East Coast as well. So like Pat said, in this, uh, in th- this fucking crazy world that we're living in, I think it's good to, to spread some awareness around for all of the, the bands that are out there. And it's from everybody listening and everybody kind of putting together their, their support for all of what makes a local music scene that'll help keep it alive post pandemic. So I think it's important to, to do that as well. Well said, and listen up everybody that's on this. Um, I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the podcast, like five, six minutes ago that my college education was working. And again, I, I studied econ. So I know when it comes to like consumer behaviors, I know you guys love convenience and, when it comes to following these guys on ever you can, buying their merch, supporting them, you, you I know you guys, you want it as convenient as possible. You're not going to want to search this stuff up. You're going to want some place where you can just click it and just go right there. So I'm going to make you have no excuses when it comes to not following them. You're going to have to follow them because if you look at the description of the podcast on Spotify, Podcast, Google Play, or you look at the description of the YouTube video, anything you need to know about Crooked Ways when it comes to following them, their website, where to buy their merch, where to watch their videos, stream their music, anything. It's going to be one click away. All the links are going to be in the description. So you have no excuse. And I mean no excuse to not follow this band and get in on them now. And I say this twice for emphasis. Emphasis! <laughs> what Kevin said. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, guys, Nick, Patrick, Zach, thank you guys for being guests on the Core Progression Podcast. This was fun. And I always say it's fun, but that's the honest to God's truth because these are always fun as all hell. And now I'm super energetic, even though I have to be up at like five in the morning tomorrow. So that'll be interesting. But <laughs> we had a blast too. Thanks so much for having yeah. us. Yeah, for being, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being on, guys. I um, can't wait to get you guys to get back on stage and also see you guys play live as well. And again, if you guys see the crazy guy that ends up getting hurt in the mosh pit at your show, likely going to be me because that's just usually what happens. So there's that. And then also I never like to end these with a goodbye because that also implies that it's kind of like the end of it. And this is definitely going to be the the last time we talk, chat, maybe have you on the podcast or see you live because I was like to see as many bands like have interviewed live because it's just always fun as all hell. So I never end these with a goodbye. So I'm going to end this with a see you later. See you (laughs) you later, man. See you guys.
well, 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 friends, that was my interview with Crooked Ways out of Eastern Pennsylvania. We had three of the four members of the band on, and that was incredibly fun. I cannot wait to get back to concert so I can see these guys play live, and I can be the guy in the pit that just starts a bunch of crazy stuff. So, yes, take a look at the description of the podcast so you can follow all our stuff and follow all of their stuff as well because it is fun, it is good, it is a fun time. And also, they're a fun band, so... Yeah, go follow their stuff. I made it as simple as hell for you guys. Just look at the description of the podcast and of the video. All the links are there. You have no excuse. No excuse. Emphasis. Emphasis. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you guys for watching and listening to the podcast, to the Core Progression Podcast, where we are interviewing all the emerging bands in the rock and metal scene today and letting you get in on them now so you get a breaking rights over your friends when they're the biggest band by the end of the decade. This is all brought to you by My Sunday Rock 2000 Day. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of these episodes with a big, healthy, and hearty. See y'all!